The 2015 Polyglot Gathering is brought to you by italki. Become fluent in any language. Thank you everyone for coming. Um, I, uh, I have to notice that there are no pyramids, deserts, or camels on uh, my first slide. Um, there are pyramids, deserts, and camels in the Middle East and in Arabic speaking areas. However, there are also waterfalls, touristing hummus, it's always good. Um, so I hope that uh, via the Arabic language it can be an opportunity uh, for you to learn about the um, cultural, linguistic, and natural diversity of this region. It's not, it's not limited to just one type of Arabic language. Okay, so today we'll learn a little background about the Arabic language. Within the next 15 minutes, you will know how to write in Arabic or read in Arabic at least. Uh, we have a lot to cover, so but I think you guys will do it. Um, the Arabic group system, Arabic greetings, which are very important. A little bit of self-introduction and um, yeah, a little bit of talk about what next steps and how to approach the study of Arabic. So Arabic is spoken across a very wide region. There's actually no official de agreed definition of what's the difference between a language and a dialect based on mutual intelligibility. Some of the people here definitely do not understand the people over here. However, culturally, historically, politically, all of them use the official standard Arabic as their official language, even if they can't always understand each other's dialect. So, okay, so types of Arabic language, there's three basic types. So classical Arabic um, was formed at the foundation of Islam, and because of the historical connection with the religion, it's actually really preserved the language. Like if I tried to read Beowulf, which is a comparable time frame, I would not be able to understand the fail of old English. However, a modern Arabic speaker can read the Quran, which is the, the holy book from the same time period, and read it. So the, the language of Arabic is really the tied to culture and religion throughout history. Um, modern standard, standard Arabic is the kind of um, it's the official standardized Arabic. Uh, this is used in media, all media, almost all books. Um, this is what is taught in schools throughout this entire region that you saw on the last slide. Um, and this is called an Arabic fusha. If you say MSA or Modern Standard Arabic, Arabic speakers are not going to know what you're talking about. So uh, that's a language learner term. So it's fusha. Uh, and then you have many different types of spoken Arabic. Um, and this is called Amiya, which is the general language. Or if you go into the the Morocco, Algeria area, their their term for it in their local dialect is Dedica. Both of them just mean like the, the general language, the language people actually speak. Okay, some of the major Arabic dialects are Levantine dialect or Shabi. This is there's a lot of diversity even within each of these dialect regions, but the general group, this is the material of the Palestine, Egyptian or mostly, Egypt and Arabic is Mos. Uh, North African, which is commonly mixed with French. If you're going to that part, I advise you to learn French, not to use it instead of Arabic, but because many people in the streets will not be capable of separating the languages because it's just a part of how they speak to integrate the two. Um, Gulf dialect, or Khaliji, which just means Gulf. Uh, Iraqi, and then there are many, many other <coughs> dialects, which is a big challenge in learning Arabic. So, this is Gulf Arabic, because you have the Gulf here, so the Gulf is over here. Uh, Levantine, or Shami, is spoken here. Egyptian is spoken in Egypt. Um, and then you have here uh, the, the Maghrebi, or Dadaja, of course, this area. How about the Roman? Huh? Did you mention Sudan? Did I speak like Egypt? Or? I think they're a bit closer to Egypt, but again, like all of these areas are going to have a lot of local dialects. So, yeah, but they're going to be roughly closer to Egypt than to the other, the other countries. Okay, some related languages. Um, it's a Semitic language. So, just for personal interest, here's so some languages that are connected to it. Uh, and then these are. Um, yeah, so, so a lot of these are due to religious influence or being neighbors of Arabic speaking countries. With Spain and Portugal, they integrated a lot of, um, a lot of Arabic words due to their presence in the region for many centuries. 
And then because um, the Middle East is kind of, if you want to conquer the world, you have to go to the Middle East. So um, as a result, they've kind of picked up vocabulary from all the major conquering groups that have come through and just having, in modern day, having neighbors. So like, um, if you are learning Syrian dialect, you're going to find more Turkish words. If you're learning Iraqi dialect, you're going to find a little bit more Farsi. But like because the Turks are everywhere at some point, you might find a little bit of Turkish words scattered throughout. Um, okay, so we're going to jump to the writing pronunciation first. So it's written from right to left. They are usually joined together. Not always. We're going to go over that in a moment. And the shape of the letter depends on its position in the world. Word. So it could have a different shape, whether it's at the beginning, like when you first put your pen down, or whether it's in the middle when you're kind of working on connecting it, or if it's the last letter you write before you lift up your pen. We'll go over this as well. Short vowels are usually not written. They are written in calligraphy, and calligraphy is a very wonderful form of art of the Arabic language. A lot of times it's not meant to be actually read, it's just art. I have a hard time reading it. Um, I, when I was searching, I happened to find my name, so that's also a good practice for um, you know, practicing using the Arabic script. It's kind of phonetically sound. It's a phonetic alphabet, so it's, it's, once you learn the pronunciations, it's fairly straightforward. All right, and let's. Let's jump into this. Okay, so um, if you guys can pass this around, there should be enough for one every two or three people. Both sides for Sue, because this is hard to read from this far away. Do you want to? Yeah, if you already are kind of familiar with the average script, uh, make sure the people who are not, and you'll probably have to share. Okay, so you can't really see the top, but. Yes. Okay, so here you see these columns. Actually, it's written right to us, so this really should be here, because we don't read left to right. But this is the initial, this is what it looks like at the beginning of the word. So this column here, when you first put your pen down, the word is going to look like this. This is what it looks like in the middle, and the end, and this is what it looks like separately. But it, there are common characteristics. For example, let's look at the letter, basically the letter B, the bus sound. Okay, the letter B, its characteristic is having one dot below the line. So usually letters, these types of letters come with like a carrier, and they'll have a certain number of dots above or below the line. So even though it changes shape a little bit, depending on where it is in the word, you're always going to have just one dot below the line, and this is a B sound. Okay, can everyone kind of follow that? Um, a lot of the letters carry that, like this is a TH sound, the thought. This has, it's hard to see on here, but it has three dots above the line. So whether it's beginning, middle, end, or by itself, it always has three dots above the line. Um, some are changed shapes slightly more drastically. Let's look at the, the cap. Yeah, the I. Where's I? I is here. It's always going to be kind of this loop shape, but it's a loop. But it just, if you can get your hands on this alphabet card, hopefully we have enough for everyone to at least look over someone's shoulder. This is your decoder, right? We're not going to memorize the alphabet today, but we're going to decode the Arabic words. Um, Kef changes shape a little bit. There are a few letters that... Um, they don't have that, yeah, like the, the ra sound. Um, you cannot connect it to the next letter. You just It's just part of the letter. You just can't connect it. So even if you're in the middle of the word, you have to pick up your pen and you have to move to the initial letter for the next one. So there are a couple of letters where you will see a small space in the word just because that's where it ends. So, um, okay, we'll go through from that. I have a little bit of a cold, so hopefully this pronunciation works. I'm just going to say, I'm not going to say the name of the letter, we're just going to say how it's pronounced. So everyone, repeat after me. Um, a. 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 Ba. Ba. Ta. Ta. Tha. Tha. Ja. Ja. Ha. Ha. This is like, imagine a window and you're trying to fog it, and you're, so the H is H, but it's like, ha. 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 Da. 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 Um, note on this, we don't, as an English speaker, we have both in English, but we don't differentiate it, so I make this mistake a lot. This is um, like in three, three, and this is the, that's the, yeah, yeah. 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 so, the, 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 the,
Za, 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 sa, 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 sa,
general concept. Um, and what Arabic grammar involves is basically changing these roots to form new words. And there are very specific forms to do this. For example, mektab, you add this, this ma at the beginning. Um, this means a place where writing is done. So the, when you add this alif in the, in the second space, it means like the doer, someone who is doing something. So this is the one who is doing the writing. So, so catch it. So, and it can also help you deduce meanings of new words if you come across a word that you've never seen before, but you can recognize its three root letters. And you know it's root, you can at least kind of guess. It will give you another clue to the addition of context as to what the meaning of the word is. Same thing with here. We've got la ein or lan ein ba. So all of these have something to do with play. You see melab, a place where you play. It's a playground. Uh, live. I don't even know how to manipulate it for now, but this is a concept that I see left out of a lot of beginners' Arabic resources. Um, and it's kind of like the foundation of Arabic language. So it's important to at least to know that it exists. Um, okay, now we're going to get speaking. No more writing, no more grammar. Thanks, grammar. Okay. Um, so. Arabic greetings, they get you a lot further than with a lot of other languages because you don't just say hi, hi, how are you, how are you. You continue for like a minute or two saying how are you in like six different ways. And then hello and probably two or three different ways. So you're going to use these greetings a lot more in Arabic than perhaps you would in other languages. And so we're just going to use a few. These are, these would work in formal or informal situations pretty much. Everywhere. Yeah, I think these are pretty much understood everywhere. I think maybe they're not used as commonly, but, and I'm not so, I've never been to Morocco, so, and that's kind of a very different dialect. But these are very, like, standard. And what's a, um, a very common feature of Arabic expressions is that there's a specific call and a specific response. So you don't say, good morning, good morning. You say, um, you know, we'll, we'll get to good morning in the next slide. So um, the first one you, it's, okay, so repeat after me. Marhaba. To respond, you can't just say marhaba, or you can say marhab came. Actually, let me, you guys can see this. Let's transcribe here. Next 
actually to be able to see the optimization. So with marhaba, you can either repeat marhaba, or you can say marhabtain. It's <laughs> literally like two marhabas. So like someone says hello to you, and you like you get two hellos back. <laughs> so I'm gonna I'm gonna say the call, and everyone say the response. So marhaba. Marhabtain. Very good. Um, okay, next one, very common. Ahlan wa sahlan. Uh, there's a history of this, it means that it's like, you know, may your, um, you know, like some expression, like your may your walking be easy, easy and your journey be very fun, but now it's been reduced to just ahlan um, The response, the common response is ahlan bik. This really means like, welcome to you. So I'll say the, the greeting. Ahlan wa sahlan. Okay, and then this one. I guess some people tell me it's used in only Muslims, some people tell me it's used in all, it's in all religions. Uh, all religions. Okay, it just means peace be upon you. Um, you hear it a lot, especially at the beginning of a formal speech, but you also hear it in casual conversation, depending you know, on the dialect. And it literally means like peace on you. Um, so I'll uh, say it. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. And the response is, wa alaikum assalam. Very good. Just one okay. Um, okay, so I'll say this all. <coughs> Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. Now you guys need to practice the call. So um, on the count of thalatha, everyone will say this side, and I will respond to you. Yeah. Okay. So wahed ethnen thalatha. Marhabtain. Ahlan bi. Assalamu alaikum. <laughs> Very good. Okay. Now we're going to. Um, okay, so I like these. The uh, um, yeah, I like the literal translations of these. Like sabah is morning. Um, Khayr literally means good. So very nice way to say. Um, so sabah wa khayr. The response is Sabah Noor. You're paying close attention, you'll notice that El, El just means the in Arabic. It has a lot of grammatical functions as well, but it basically just means the. So it's here in Al Khair, but it's here in Al Noor, but we don't say the El. You notice we don't say the El here. So in Arabic, with specifically with the word El, the, there's a pronunciation rule. Um, it's called some letters and moon letters. You can look up, there's a list of them. It's basically the softer letters to make pronunciation easier. We don't pronounce the, the L sound before them. Um, so you can look up the list later. With practice, it comes quite naturally. But basically, this is a, the ch is a sound that you pronounce the, the L and the the before it, and the moon is a sound that you don't. So that's why. L is there in both cases, but it's not there in the pronunciation. So again, Sabah al Khair. Sabah al Khair. Oh, very good for anyone who said Sabah al Nur. Okay, so I'll, okay, I'll read if you guys respond. So, Sabah al Khair. Sabah al Nur. Okay? Same thing with evening, same exact pattern. So, Masa al Khair. Masa al Khair. Masa al Nur. Masa al Nur. And this is the. I didn't have, there's no formal system of romanization for Arabic. So this, in, in this case, is a glottal stop. So, Masa. So, Masa al Khair. Masa al Khair. And this is used very commonly, at least in the dialect I'm familiar with. Okay, we'll go through both. Sabah al Khair. Sabah al Nur. Masa al Khair. Masa al Nur. Okay, now your turn. What have you named for that? Sabah al Nur. Masa al-Nur. Masa al-Nur. Very good. Okay, for the most common goodbyes, um, like when you say goodnight, there's a specific response, or when you say like, like sleep well, there's a specific response. But for these two, for some reason, there's no specific response. So, um, the most common goodbye is um, ma'asalama. Literally, this means with peace. Okay? So, ma'asalama. Ma'asalama. And then uh, Layla, Layla means nice, Saida means happy. So this is also used only as a goodbye, not as a not as a vote. So Layla Saida. Layla Saida. Good. Okay. Uh, 
So um, I thought of doing like a game of like, the side says the flaws and the side, but I think there's too many people. So just turn to try to turn to maybe two people next to you and just come up to them, say hello. You can say hello in two different ways if you like, um, and then say goodbye. But at the first, like I also made this, it's not rude, but they're not expecting to say when they say, How are you? Oh, yeah, pretty good. My grandma's out of the hospital, and, you know, and so they're not expecting that. You're just supposed to say, like, Good, you know, like, Good, and then you can talk about the details later in the conversation. So, readings really get you further. On so, quick note, um, maybe some of you know about the difference between formal Arabic and informal. So, the formal way to say, How are you? is Haluka. Yeah. For this is addressed to um, a male person, and for a female, it's Pefa Haruki. In general, with the pronouns, the um, a is connected with the male with, with pronouns, and, and the e is uh, connected to female. Um, Arabic has gendered for everything except for I and e, There's a male and female pronouns, so like. You male, you female, two of you male, two of you female, two of them male, two of them female. A lot of them are not used because to have 13 pronouns in their language on every basis is too much. Um, but they still have, in everyday speech, only about seven or eight of them are used. Um, but yeah, so but to say kaifa haluka in the streets is kind of like, you know, how art thou? How is your condition? And um, they'll understand, but it'll sound a little bit strange to them. So um, basically, dialectal Gal Arabic is very commonly formal Arabic that's been like, condensed uh, and twisted a little bit. So instead of kaifa haluka, you have kaifa. Yeah. So kaifa haluki, you have kaifa. This is a, a common. Okay. Um, there are many ways to respond as well. We'll go into other ways to say how are you briefly. Very universal way that works in both standard and non-standard is come on. Um, and it just means good, so you can use that pretty much universally. Uh, but is more, it's more formal, so you wouldn't use that too often in a formal situation. Um, Alhamdulillah, it means praise God. It can mean anything depending on the tone of your voice. <laughs> so you, you can, you're not really supposed to say like poorly, but if someone asks you how are you, you're like, yeah, Alhamdulillah. That's like, you know, I'm not allowed to complain because of my religion, but actually, I think <laughs> <laughs> Or you could just say, you know, Alhamdulillah. You know what? I'm just kidding. I'm happy. Um, but yeah, so. Uh, and then, Shukran. It means thank you. This is a important general word to know in any language. So, uh, and wa'ant. And you. Or wa'anta, wa'ant. Uh, depending on the gender. Um, yeah, so someone says, oh, okay. Toma, shukran, wa'ant. Alhamdulillah. Okay, kalah. And then you continue. Okay? Um, is, there, yes. is there a na at the end of that shukran? 
Oh, oh um, yeah, it's thin weed. Yeah, there's, there's kind of weed. <coughs> it's a grammatical feature, which maybe on the earlier side, you know, just, it was marhaban, but we just said marhaba. Mm -hmm. So sometimes it's like a more formal grammatical feature, but for some reason, shukran like retains the even in dialectical. The end sound even dialectical. So it's uh, it's there. So it's, it's one of those invisible vowels. In the thing, but you remember how I said the short vowels are not written, or like there's there's diacritical marks that add pronunciation that are generally not written. <laughs> so actually, there's like there's supposed to be two lines above this guy, and that's pronounced like an. But yeah, good point. So but the base shukra is pretty standard. Um, and you, it's literally and you. Uh, and well, and so, like we had pick haluka, pick haluki, just for male, female, and same thing, male, female. So wanta or wanti. Yeah. So wanta for male, or you can just say wanti. Wanti. It's, it's common in dialect. So if you're not, if you can't remember, you can get away with it. You know what I'm saying? And if you're a learner, people are going to forgive you. My host family was almost all female, so when I would go out in the streets, I would address, I would address men as female as well. And no one got, no one got really upset at me. So, yeah. Okay, um, yeah, turn to your neighbor and ask them how they are. <laughs> Like I am like you, uh, yeah, and it just doesn't make sense to me. So um, a lot of these wow. expressions are very. These ones on the left here are more widely understood. So yeah, um, I don't know the correct pronunciation of the Moroccan, but we'll go through the ones that. Okay, so Cape Hadik, Cape Alhan, It's literally like how is the condition, uh, but it's used very informally. Cape uh, Take a saha. A saha is the help. So, um, this is relatively common to shuach bar. Um, this is like what's your news? Yeah, a bar. A bar is the news. Um, these were given to me by a Jordanian, I'm not sure about the usage, but it's relatively understood throughout the Levantine region. So, Shua Amal. Shua Amal. Shua Amal is, yeah, it's like what, both of these are kind of like, what are you doing? Um, very Jordanian, I would say. Asia Kabir. Asia Kabir. Very Gulf. Shlonek. Shlonek. Literally, is like, what's your color? Like, you would ask me, what's up? We're not actually asking what's up. So, yeah, Shlonek. Egyptian is Zayik. Zayik. Amalek. Amalek. Very Iraqi. Shaku Maku. Shaku Maku. This is only in Iraq. It's a very local way of saying what's up here. Shufi Mafi. That really means what's in and what's not in. <laughs> um, I, don't, I don't know what sort of phonetic system he used, and I don't know how to pronounce the mouth in So uh, I think this one's Kirai. Kirai? Yeah, it's like what's. 
what's your view, what you're seeing? But I'm not going to object on the roads. <laughs> but just, um, yes, if you want to pick one that you like, so that you know some local slang. It's only in Surat. You're going to be invested in So self-introduction. Uh, we're going to stick with formal position for <coughs> the question which changed with that. So ism means name. So um, ma ismuka or ma ismuki. Ma, ma ismuka. Everyone say? Ma ismuka. Ma ismuki. Ma ismuki. Ismi Catherine. So I will ask you what your name is. Respond with it's me plus my Okay. Um, Min Aina Anta. This little lady is from, uh, from where? You. The, um, the verb to be in Arabic, it exists. It is not commonly used in the present tense. So in the present tense, the verb to be is just implied. Um, yeah. Okay, so they don't say from our, where are you. They say from where you. Because the R is implied. Okay, so repeat after me. Min Aina Anta. Min Aina Anta. Min Aina Anti. Min Aina Anti. Okay, the response is Ana Min. I didn't have time to look up everyone's country names, and I think we don't have time to go over that today. So, just say the name. Well, oftentimes, it's just approximately altered into Arabic pronunciation. For now, just say it. Yeah. So, I will ask you. Min Aina Anta. Fursa Saida. Fursa Literally means happy opportunity. <laughs> yeah, but it translates to. Uh, you may remember from Layla Saida? Yeah, yeah. so same word. Fursa Saida. Okay, so let's do a little dialogue back and forth again. So, Ma is Muka. Min Aina Anta. Okay, now your turn, you ask me. Okay? It's me, Catherine. I'm in America. Okay. All right. I'll leave this last slide up since there's a lot of vocabulary you guys have already learned. Um, but try to turn to your neighbor and ask them um, hello.
discussing. So, so we're just going to talk about some, some tips uh, for the Arabic study. So maybe you've heard about the struggles of knowing what type of Arabic to study versus the formal or the dialect and which dialect. And like, do I have to learn two different languages? And, uh, but so we have the four major languages or learning skills, right? We have speaking, listening, reading, and writing. Um, what I recommend is doing what the Arabs are good at doing, or what they what they do. A lot of them are not very good at speaking formal Arabic. It's more of a passive skill because they get it from the news, from the media. So with uh, formal Arabic, if you want to approach what native speakers are capable of doing, you can focus on reading, listening, maybe a little bit of writing. Um, I'm kind of lazy, right? So, so. And mostly in modern standard Arabic. In modern standard Arabic, yes. In formal Arabic, these are the skills that are most often used. It's really not often spoken in Western media. Uh, unless you want to like, work for Al Jazeera someday, then you will need to have very good spoken Arabic. Mm -hmm. um, otherwise, if you want to um, get to the point where yeah, you are what native speakers can usually do, reading and listening are the two most important skills, followed by writing. Um, if you want to go um, with dialect, you don't really need to learn how to read and write. Um, basically speaking and listening. Uh, reading and writing is only used like in text messages and formal. I think there's some Egyptian books. Egyptian has done a lot more on trying to standardize its dialect into a written form. Um, but otherwise, it's just written approximately how you pronounce it. So there's not really like an official codified writing system. So you don't learn two languages, you learn one and a half. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so it's somewhat, somewhat of the thing for people who are overwhelmed by the types of Arabic. That's great. Um, say, for example, that I learned uh, Egyptian mm -hmm. Arabic. Can that be understood if I say come to uh, Saudi Arabia? Yes, because they watch Egyptian comedies. However, you will not be able to understand them. <laughs> 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 yeah. Yeah. yeah, and we'll talk a uh, bit about that as well. So a lot of people are like, oh, no one speaks MSA, no one speaks formal Arabic, don't do it. But there are reasons why it's good to learn MSA if you want to at all read or listen to the news or media programs, um, you, you need to know formal Arabic. But straightforward. If you're just traveling and wanting to like order things in the, in the store or chat with people in the streets, then, then don't learn formal, just learn how to read the numbers so you can bargain better um, in the market. Um, but otherwise, you will eventually need it for, for these formal purposes. Um, if you want to read anything, you can listen to the news. And in my opinion, it's easier. Remember, I said there's like 12 form pronouns, 12 or 13 in formal Arabic, but only seven or eight are used. So, make your life slight, at least from the people I've seen who tried to go dialect formal, it seems somewhat easier to go formal dialect and simplify what we cover. So, if you're going to learn both, it's somewhat easier to learn formal first. It also helps us learn other dialects later because all of them originated from the same body of Arabic. So um, so if you know the formal Arabic, you can kind of follow the etymology with how like, okay, this word is used in this context instead in this dialect. <coughs> so it helps with switching between dialects. And, yeah. Um, so it helps with neutralizing your dialect. This is, um, this is what native speakers do when they speak with someone who has a very different dialect. They attempt to not use their local slang. Some people are very bad at this. We have a classmate who cannot. All the other Arabs can neutralize their dialect, and he can't. So he has a hard time speaking with other Arabs. So, um, but if you have, like, if you only know one dialect, you won't really know which words are local. Um, and it's not always a good guide. But if you have some standard mm -hmm. Arabic, it at least like gives you a guess of how your dialect that you're learning differs from the standard. It gives you a frame of reference. Um, to work from when you're utilizing your diary. So um, my personal recommendation is get to A2 and MSA. With this, you've learned a lot of the standard grammar that stays the same, pretty much the same. Um, the same grammar is used in dialectical Arabic as in standard Arabic at the base. Maybe slight distortions in pronunciation, but the ideas behind the grammar are the same. So my recommendation is to get like a framework in formal Arabic, and then we'll focus on the dialect of your choice, and that will. The, the two best dialects to learn are either, um, unless you really want to go to a specific country, um, are either a Levantine or Egyptian. I've asked a bunch of different dialects, they all tell me different things. A lot of them think uh, the Levantine Shami dialect is prettier, especially if you're a girl. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah. Um, but like uh, Egyptians, they have their known for good movies and comedies. Um, Egyptians, but um, it's like Syrians are known for their TV dramas uh, and TV shows, which are also broadcast. Gulf, they also have TV programs, which are broadcast throughout. 
but um, <coughs> those are the two most commonly understood. I wish because they have they have this they call it the, the white Arabic, where it's like kind of the, the, the neutralized Arabic where you try to speak with like the maximum amount of understanding, and this is what native speakers do, but no one's like taking it really down. This is really perfect for us. But it doesn't exist at this point, so for now we have to say it. Uh, so how to have dialects real quick. There are some, um, in each dialect there are standard pronunciation shifts. So like once you learn basic alphabet in standard Arabic, then you look at your dialect and you're like, okay, how is each letter pronounced in this, um, in this? There's some common culprits, cough. It can be up, g, uh, j. Like, uh, so watch out for the cough, depending on your dialect. And then once you know the standard shifts, you can kind of translate in your head back to your understanding of it. Some of these are pronounced as Z's. Um, there is a K, comes a Ch sometimes. Like so, Talata and Talata. Yeah, 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 like I said, T becomes Z. So when you first start to hack a dialect or hack a new dialect from an MSA or from another dialect, go through and learn the standard pronunciation shifts in all the letters. The question words change a lot. So if you learn the question words in your particular dialect, that will help you. The word for it's once, I think because it uses the family changes a lot. Um, negation, yeah, somewhat changes. And then Egyptians, they like to flip word order. An Egyptian friend told me it's because they put the most important thing first. Um, I don't know the actual reason, but double check. So this is how to get started with, with hacking a new dialect. And then you can just use the word from the dialect you know or from MSA to kind of jump into it. Because there are still quite a lot of words that are common. Okay, um, looks like any, we don't like any type of questions, but. Yeah. Um, but um, yeah, we're, we're take questions. If you see me, or we have some, several native Arabic speakers at the conference, and we have a number of people who learned Arabic to advanced level. So if you see any of us, your your challenge will be to come up and greet me <laughs> and uh, introduce yourself to me or one of the other speak Arabic speakers. Um, and yeah. So, okay. Does anyone have any questions?